You're listening to the Life of Lozo podcast. We are live here at Life of Lozo. He is the funniest, smartest, sexiest guy I know. <laughs> Lozo is now live. Yo, on this episode, we do something we've never done before, and I review an album live on social media. That's right, we're talking about Eminem's revival album, and I give my opinion and thoughts. Thank you to Jay Harvey for being a pain in my ass and making me do this show. I really appreciate it. And thank you, of course, to our sponsors all the time. Stay tuned, Studios, The Taylor Shop, Inc., Zero Productions, A Charles Photos, The Beat Brigade, Rhyme Designs Clothing, Ronsworth Guitars, The Music Experience, Custom Shirts, and more, The Art of Tyler Willis, TheMishmash.com, and of course, Jack Nutrition. Let's go. What's going on? For the first time ever doing a Life of Lozo podcast in real time live on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and um, I think YouTube might be working too. So never uh, never actually done this before this way. So uh, thanks for hopping on and joining. But I've uh, been getting a lot of requests, so I'm actually recording this as well via the typical podcast. i uh, been getting a whole bunch of requests around uh, talking about this this latest Eminem album um, as as most people know uh i uh you know i'm, I'm from michigan um I've, I've been into hip-hop for a very long time i got to dj uh, around the state of michigan um and actually at the time of uh what's up jay <laughs> hey jason number one thank you for the uh the hip-hop bible book um you guys can't see maybe i'll show it to you in a minute but that thing is literally 50 pounds of nothing but uh, hip-hop uh classics and in information and in history uh what's up let me see who else on there what's up gabe what's up lex lex uh, was on the podcast a couple weeks ago what's going down andrea what's up go blue that's right <laughs> so i got people on facebook got people on instagram uh, but uh and then of course shout out to jay harvey i don't know if jay's on yet but jay literally is a listener of the podcast and the show and has been harassing me non-stop uh, about this album and my thoughts on the album uh, over Facebook Messenger and things like that. So uh, I just I just really want to talk about the album. You know, I uh, ha- having been from from Michigan and Detroit and been a DJ in Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti, Kalamazoo. Shouts out to Western Michigan. Shouts out to WIDR, where we actually played Eminem's Infinite uh, record on vinyl. Uh, that's right. We were fortunate enough to have one of the 500 copies that he had pressed up. Uh, early on in his career, um, so I just share that uh, mostly because you know I'm a fan clearly, and I've been following his career for a long time, and um, you know I just there's been a lot of uh, talk about this album, and uh, and I felt it, I thought it'd be kind of cool to talk about it and record it. So I'm gonna do it live on social media, but I'm also recording it uh, here on the microphone uh, for the podcast to be able to release that kind of as a as a another episode later this week. What's up, Kool Aid? I see you hopped on as well. What's up, Mikey? Uh, Adriana, what's up? Mike Hogan, what's up? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tangeray. DJ Tangeray, you still got your vinyl copy, my friend? That thing's got to be worth millions of dollars, bro. Uh, I've been looking on, uh, on, uh, on eBay and everything, but for those that have the, uh, the, the original pressing of Infinite on vinyl, that is hard to come by. Um, and even more so, double points if you got the Slim Shady EP uh, that came out right before he got signed, and then of course they pulled it off the shelves from all the record stores, including Damon's Records and everybody in Detroit. Uh, it was literally out for like a couple of weeks, and then he got signed to Dre. They pulled it off the shelf. They put the majority, not all of those songs, but the majority of those sh- those songs got put on the Slim Shady LP. Uh, a couple of beats uh, got got remixed for that. What's up, Jay Bird? What's going on, brother? Hey, I talked about the podcast, man. I got that Western Michigan helmet, dude. I need that signed number five jersey. <laughs> don't hold back bro come on hook me up um but uh but yeah that uh, that slim shady uh the original ep was was even crazier it had the original beat um for just the two of us and things like that so uh so shout out to anybody who's got that post it if you got it i don't think very many people do uh that was hard to come by but anyway so revival album review so uh so a, a, a couple of things you know I'm, I'm doing for this year 2018 i'm gonna be doing a lot of uh a lot more content for the podcast. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking we're gonna do some album reviews. I had uh, my boy um, Sean Mikes uh, up here the other day, and, and we're gonna relaunch Face Off, which was the show that we did all in college radio uh, back in Kalamazoo. And 
and and you know just had a good time with it and back then it was just nothing but underground hip-hop and uh, that's what we talked about but i think we're gonna do it again this year and we're just simply going to talk about um unsigned artists and uh and, and people that are out there doing really, really great music that just need some pub and, and you know, we feel good about the music. We don't talk about it. So uh, what I want to do for this album is kind of kick off that whole concept of the show, but with four things. So I'm going to talk about the theme of the album and kind of how I feel about the theme. I'm going to talk about the lyrics uh, from the album. What's up, The Hills? I think half the neighborhood is now joining us on Facebook Live. What's up? Hills, the dub G's, what's going on, Winter Garden in the house. <laughs> um, but uh, we're going to talk about theme. We're going to talk about lyrics. Uh, of course, we got to talk about lyrics. And uh, we got to talk about production. And then the fourth thing I want to talk about is replay value. Uh, those things to me are probably four of the most important things when it comes to reviewing some of uh, the music that's out there. So, uh, so I guess I'll just kick it right off. So Eminem Revival. So here we go. Uh, number one, theme. Now, it's Eminem, so here's a couple things he's always going to talk about, regardless of album, regardless of what he's doing in life. Uh, he's going to talk about his mom, <laughs> and whether or not he loves her, he hates her, uh, he wants to apologize for his work, whether he's reflecting on it, there's going to be some type of content in regards to his mom, there's going to be some type of content in regards to his wife, uh, there's going to be some content in regards to his daughter, um, and then he's always going to be working through current personal states and current issues and things like that. So, you know, you got to figure uh, going all the way back to Infinite and going into the Slim Shady LP. Um, what I appreciated about that album, number one, the D baby, what's up, Chris, uh, representing Detroit. And there was a lot of content in that first album um, that was about Detroit, specific to WJLB and the radio station and how they said that's where hip hop lives. But everybody in the D knew that was not the case for the most part. Uh, he talked about working at Builder Square. He talked about, you know, wanting to, to work for the union in, 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 the, in the car industry because that's what everybody wanted to do back then. So there was a lot of content in that first album um, that I really appreciated. But those themes of, of his mother, his wife, his daughter and what was going on in his real life started back then and they have been on every single album that he's ever released so thematically um I, I would say sturdy as an album it's the same things he talks about a lot of articles i've read and stuff that i've said about eminem is they say you know for the last however many years 10 years 15 years whatever that it's that it's recycled content that he's always talking about the same stuff um but i would i would i would also agree that the majority of hip-hop artists are always talking about the same stuff uh whether it's your top five of uh, uh of of biggie of nas of tupac like while they had different themes of music in songwriting and doing things um where they would talk about different stuff you would always have this core of who they were and what they knew and what they talked about and so these are the things so when it comes to a theme for me when you think of eminem um he, he stayed current to his theme uh, when I think of, and, and I got to go with ratings out of five just because I grew up, uh, what's up, what's up DJ Armando? Um, what's up, uh, oh, A. Charles Photos, what's up Anthony? Uh, what's up? There's a whole bunch of people hopping on, thank you. Uh, what's up Zach, ain't seen you in a minute. Um, but uh, what, what I think about uh, Eminem, right, I, and, and then theme, I think the theme is solid, um, and I think you stuck with it. And, and and I would say in a rating from a standpoint, I got to go with five, like one, like like out of five, because I grew up in, you know, I grew up in in uh, in, in the source when when five mics mattered. So I'm going to stick with the number five. And so from a theme standpoint, I got to go three out of five. Um, I, I think thematically um, there's some good content in there. There's some great self-reflection. It's different now. He's no longer a struggling 20 something year old, you know, mid 20s, just trying to get his life together and figure stuff out. He's now 45 years old, right? So like, you know, the theme is different, you know, growing is different, being sober is different. Um, and he addresses all those things on the album. So I give him a three out of five on theme. Um, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to lyrics, here we go, right? Uh, lyrics is a big deal. Um, I, uh, DJ Tango, right? Thank you, sir. I, I totally agree. Lyrically, this album, here's what, here's what Ray says. Lyrically, this album proves he is still technically the best MC in the game. Technically, there is no question about that what's up squiggy um there's no question about it uh from a technical writing standpoint regardless if you like his his what he says or what he doesn't say um there in my opinion there's no better writer of how, how to actually write rhymes and the structure of rhymes out there now i'll tell you 
also from a theme standpoint or from from a from a lyric standpoint clearly you can ask him about that and he borrows from rock him and he borrows from red man and he borrows from a lot of those earlier mcs that he looks up to and uh and you see, you see that but i think he's taken that and completely driven that into something um that that is far and away exceeds so just as an example and like i read a couple articles about some of his analogies and some of the things that he said on this album and you know i, I kind of like the wind chime line if you heard the album some people were hating on it like you know i'm in the air like wind chimes whatever but if you think of if you go all the way back and say like you're going to judge him on some of those that maybe missed the mark you go back to like the infinite album and he's talking about you know you can be Run D, you'll never be the MC. I'll stop the alphabet at S and get it down to a T. You could date a stick, you could date a stick of dynamite and wouldn't go out with a bang. Like you could say those were cheesy too. They were dope, but they were cheesy. They were they weren't the best, but there were so many other great ones in those albums um, that you can't just ju- you can't just pick and choose certain things in there because you know even in, in if you think of his classic albums with people that say that that this album you know it's it, it's trash they don't like it like his heyday was over well then fine go go pull the slim shady lp look at look at bad meets evil look at something he does with royce the five nine where they're going back and forth completely lyrical standpoint right and he's saying things like you know give me two fat tabs and three shrooms and you won't see me like fat people in steam rooms like okay it could have been better all right you know but that that's his thing. He's he's gonna have some of those lines that happen in there, uh, and even even like in 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 the Slim Shady LP in the in in the song the kids right. Speaking of peanuts, you know what else is bad for squirrels? Ecstasy. It's the worst drug in the world. Like, uh, all right, come on, <laughs> right? Come on, man. What, what like it? You can't you can't shockingly say that there's some misses in these recent albums when he's had lines before that 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 didn't fall as good as they could have fallen, or maybe they flipped. But then. If you want to talk about recent, uh, what's up, Nouveau Room, baby? <laughs> well, yeah, old school, uh, Kalamazoo right there. Um, if, if you think about uh, recently, so like, and, and I don't know, if, if you're an M fan, you've been following some of the, t- the things that he's dropped, right? If you want to talk about lyrics and what he does, you have to actually take into consider the stuff he's done with Slaughterhouse, the stuff he's done with Buster Rhymes, Tech 9 Big Sean. Like, you take a Tech 9 lyric for Speedum, and, and if you haven't heard Speedum yet, Listen to speed him because it's ridiculous. Um, it's another thing that M does where he'll take styles that are hot or popular or things that he's never done before, and then he does them. And in ninety nine percent of the time, he does them than, than than rappers who do them currently, which is why you hear a little bit of the the now sound in this latest album for Revival. And he's just proven like I can do that style too, and I'll add some lyrics to it. But I mean, in Tech Nine Speed him right? I pick a day to be picked, and I'm picking the week the wickedest shit to say. Spinning. Spin it back on a level, incredible, head of a rebel, unforgettable, better believe these beats are edible, I guess they're a loose leaf of vegetable, and I stalk my prey. You think you got away, but not today, murder you on a song, and then I'll just say it was Dr. Dre and Robert Blake eating lobster and steak, coffee cake at a restaurant with Drake, and Tech just got to make sure that our stories corroborate. Like, technically, what, what, what Tangare is saying is absolutely spot on, right? Lance Mitchell, rap god, like, another example of just murdering the ability for him to technically write. Right, it, it's crazy what he can do when he wants to do it. What's up, Sarah? Hey, boo. <laughs> What's up, Frankie? Um, it, it, it's crazy when he wants to actually do the things like that from a technical standpoint, regardless of content. Technically, it's one of the best people that are out there. And if you want to judge him on his capability of being a technical lyricist, there's other songs that are not necessarily on this album that he's done in the last two years that, again, will, will murder the majority of people you know, that, that are that that are trying to do that style of rap, right? Um, anything that's, you know, Ray was just saying, it's, you know, Migos, right? Like that style of rap, M's like, cool, I can do that, right? Not only can I do that, but I can do it better. <laughs> I, 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 can, I, can, I can take what you're doing. I can, you know, I can have the same cadence. I can have the same flow to it. He didn't rap God um, uh, with, with, with a looking boy, you know, type of... of, of uh, um, of cadence that was in there and again people are like yo that's crazy like he can literally do anything you like that close-up frankie that's all for you baby um and uh but but it, but it's nuts man it's absolutely killer what's up jay um his ability to technically write that way is unlike anything else now if if i'm looking at just revival though which is what i'm talking about right so i'm right now i'm just talking about the revival album um lyrically i'm like at a two and a half on it honestly right and that's tough for me to say because there's some good content in there. Um, and there's some things that happen. Like, I'll tell you, like, 
the end of the album, the last two or three songs that he's got on there, when you're talking about um, A Rose Castle and In Your Head, uh, when it comes to story writing and content, he kills it. Like that, 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 that might as well be like Stan, right? Like, like, like what he is known for, um, you know, but it, it's, he, he, he is dope with that content. He's dope with that style. Um, and then I can tell you, man, like, uh, you know, I mean, we think, we think of, the, of Stan, right? The funny thing about Stan is like, you know, he created that in the Urban Dictionary, right? No, nobody was saying the word Stan until he dropped Stan. And now that's just a thing that people talk about um, from a cultural standpoint. Um, but, but that way that he wrote that record, and we see some pieces of that again um, on Revival, it's clearly all still there. Um, he, it's clearly possible. Um, I, I, I was watching a, um, uh, a Joe Budden interview the other day, and, you know, he was politically talking about some things that are on the album. But one thing that he did say that I think made a lot of sense was, you know, Paul Rosenberg had moved to um, Def Jam. And that's that's M's manager. It's somebody that I think has been really consistent with his brand and that type of stuff. So I think when you have some changes like that, sometimes it's going to happen. And uh, and I don't know if if directionally the album could have been in a different place if there wasn't some of those changes. But I think lyrically, it, it, that is tough for me to say because uh, you know, it, it it it's I'm I'm a huge fan, and it's just a little bit somewhat disappointing um, because I wish there was more of that. Like if I could if I could go through and pick five, six, seven songs off of this album revival, um, then all of a sudden it's a different album. And I think people hear it. Um, if you threw in some of these, you know, uh, uh, other things that he's done on the album, I think I think it goes even harder. Um, but, but lyrically, I'm at like a two and a half on that thing. Um, so number three, production. So, you know, I think the last couple of albums, um, from a production standpoint, um, in my opinion have been a little bit tough. And I'm going to tell you why. If you look at um, Revival, and I even think, um, I was it the last album that I saw? Uh, I, yeah, like Marshall Mathers LP um, and some of those types of albums. Look at the production credits. You know, I, I can tell you when, when, when Eminem, I, and I think the magic of Eminem and, and when he really, really does great music um, is when you're talking about Dr. Dre and Mailman, a uh, Mailman, um, when you're talking about the Bass Brothers, um, and and like those types of productions, like Bass Brothers, you know, uh, Eight Mile Soundtrack, like a lot of songs that you hear from a musicality standpoint, because those guys actually play a lot of instruments, right? So like when they are doing that style of production, um, they 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 kill it. It's it's the perfect mix for what he does, and and technically as a writer and the way that he spits. Uh, because his patterns can vary so much, it makes sense when he's on songs that are very musically created. Um, and so, like, the, the, to me, that magic is completely the thing that makes Eminem, uh, I think, show up the way that Eminem should show up. When you look at Revival, um, it's all over the place. You got Rick Rubin on there. Um, and and it's, it's tough because, you know... Um, with 99 Problems, you know, Rick Rubin coming out and doing that old Def Jam style of production um, nowadays. Um, I, I like that he's doing that. This one, though, this album, it felt a little bit recycled. Like, it felt a little bit like he he pulled too much from the old Def Jam stuff. And, I mean, he was recycling um, Run DMC songs in here. He was recycling Beastie Boy songs in here. So from a production standpoint, like I just felt it could have been, um, it could have been better. Um, it could have been more consistent across the entire album, um, and and like I think Dr. Dre did did an intro to one song, like that was it, you know. And and I think when when you're missing that element um, of what Eminem has done uh, over the years, I think it's a really tough element to miss uh, when you're caught, when you're talking about this album from production. Because if you if if you take some of the the lyrics that he's written and the songs that he's written, and then you join that with better production, um, and you join that with the production that's happened the, the whole time around his career, I think those songs come out completely different, um, and I think people follow that, and they like that, and it hits with them, and it feels like Eminem. That, that's just my opinion on this. Too many people in the mix on this. The, 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 the production credits on this album, it, I mean, it's, it is a literally... Um, just Blaze, Frequency, Rick Rubin, like it's all over the place. Um, and and you know, I don't know. I, I'm a Mr. Porter fan. I, I I like a lot of the stuff that Mr. Porter does. 
Um, and uh, he represents on a lot of artists, um, and, and I like his stuff. Um, it just felt like it was a little too, it, it, it was a little too, um, I don't know, too all over the place for me from a production standpoint. Um, and that for me, I think personally, uh, is why he's taken hell on this album. Why, why, why the feedback um, has been bad is, is I, I don't think you, I don't think you dive into the lyrics as deep and, and get so um, caught up in some of the silly stuff that he says um, if the production on the album pulls you in, keeps you along, uh, and, and has you following along through the whole thing. You know, that's just me, I, I think, from a production standpoint. Um, so I, I gotta I gotta give two out of five on that, uh, which is which is man, that's tough again. I, <laughs> um, but I, I just think that you know I, there's a lot of talk about like you know somebody stop like 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 <laughs> like block pink, don't put her on any more records, right? <laughs> like um, Skylar Gray, I think is fantastic. I think that 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 she matches him really really well when it comes to content, um, and 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 like just her style of music and how she approaches the music. Um, I think speaks to him, and I think that makes a lot of sense. It's just that she can't be on nine songs on the album, you know. Um, it, that just it just, you know, it, then it might as well be just a you know a a, a duo album. Uh, it might be just the two of them. Um, but and and I think that you know, uh, the Walk on Water joint, you know, the Walk on Water joint with Beyonce. Um, I heard initially it was they were trying to get Adele, I think, to do it, which I think would have been cool, but I don't know that it would have changed anything. W what I liked about that song, honestly, um, is that he he basically tells you up front, like, here's what's going on, right? Like, 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 doesn't matter what I do, um, you know, I'm I'm trying, I'm gonna put this out. It's either gonna be too commercial, too pop, it's gonna be too underground. He even makes references to some of these other songs that he did um on 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 Big Sean, on Speeding with Tech Nine, about like, you know, he did it and then people were like, Ah, you rap too fast. You know what I'm saying? And, and so like it's it's one of those things where um the bar was set so high so early in his career. Uh, that that like you're never gonna get to that point again, right? So like, it, it's a it, it, I, it is a quote that I've always heard, which is like you know uh, comparison is the thief of joy. So if you're always going to compare who he is today, and this is for any artist, not just Eminem in general, but just people in general, if you compare who he is today to who he was 10, 15, 20 years ago, um, and that's what you're always pulling from, then you then always expect to be disappointed. Always expect to be disappointed because it's just not something that's going to happen, right? If 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 Nas drops an album tomorrow, right, um, people are going to have words about it, right? And look, Jay Z four four four, I enjoyed the album, I, I mostly because I'm a No ID fan, um, and and No ID I think is a dope producer, and for those that don't know, was also a, you know a, a mentor to Kanye West and has been around forever and did a lot of, of comments early work. So for me, it was dope to hear No ID um, and then Jay-Z on top of that, and, and it just felt it felt good. It was a good mix. It worked well. But that's not the same Jay-Z that was in my lifetime. That's not the same Jay-Z that was doing Big Pimpin'. That's not the same Jay-Z that was doing some of these older songs. So like you have to expect the evolution. I think the difference is what Jay-Z did right was he went and grabbed No ID <laughs> and, and brought in some dope ass production and a style that we haven't heard in a while. Um, and he did, he did a good job with that. And even listening to, um, listening to, uh, to that album, I was listening back to like the old common albums. And I was like, you know, what would be dope is if you took like Jay-Z's new lyrics on 444 and dropped them on some of those really old No ID beats, that would be sick because the cadences were right. The sound was right. The feel was right. Um, and I think that's to me from a production standpoint, why I feel tough about this um, this album is that that the production, um, you know, my the the production on it, I think could have been better, and it would have been better if it was if you stick with what with, with, with what you've always done well and what worked well for the longest time. Um, but yeah, but getting back to walk on water, like it, it, it's that's the epitome of Eminem. I'm gonna put it all out there. Uh, I'm gonna let you know exactly how I'm feeling. Um, the self awareness, the um, the saying like, "Look, hey, congratulations! If you're trying to make me feel like trash, you did a good job." Because I actually take your comments serious, right? I, I listen to my fans, um, I read the articles, um, and and I think that it's a it, it it's it's like what other artist does that? Like what other artist comes onto those songs and basically tells you exactly what's probably going to happen? 
because because it's real and it's honest and it's transparent um and that's the type of thing that he does so it's kind of like you know um i, I don't know it's, it's just one of those things that that i think only he can do uh, and i appreciate that from a content standpoint right from a from an actual written content um that's the shit and i and i and i enjoyed the production on that song um i uh um you know uh what's up siam uh you know ed sharon's song you feel like it's the best song in the album could have been a first release single uh, I liked it. It was good. I, honestly, I think I get to the end of the album. Um, those last three songs to me are probably some of the dopest ones on there. But I would probably pick that. I would probably take that song as well. If I'm building an Eminem album based on what I have to work with on Revival and then bringing in some of these other songs that he's did with other artists, I think you could piece together a really, really dope-ass full album. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at with production. And then finally, replay value. Um I've gone back, you know, with, with albums like this, with with Jay Z's four four four, with some of these artists that I, that I really enjoy, respect, and have listened to for a really long time. Um, I like to listen to the album once and then put it away, and then come back a couple of days later, right? Because there's always that initial feeling of like, what's this going to be? How's this going to feel? Is is this going to be dope? Is this going to be um, like what I expected or different? And after the first listen, I was like. I, there's there's some gems in there. There's some stuff that I like. There's some stuff where I'm like, nah, you know, not my style of what I would do. Um, but but you know, I want I want to I want to listen to it again. So that's exactly what ended up happening was like going back and listening to it a second time, a third time, a fourth time. Then after listening, to it, then I went back and started thinking about this. And then of course Jay Harvey shouts out for harassing me um, <laughs> about doing this album review. I was like, I got to think about some of these other things that he's done recently. And I also got to think about these older albums and, you know, and, and what was it in Slim Shady, Slim Shady LP? What was it in the Eminem show? What was it in the Marshall Mathers LP? What was it in Relapse that I liked? You know, when, when what were the things that he was talking about and doing? And, and I can tell you, like, if you go back and listen to a lot of these albums, um, it is still... Uh, a, a lot of that idea where he would go and he would go away for a couple of years and then he'd pop back on and then all of a sudden um, he's taking the patterns that are popular right then. You know, he's doing songs with Lil Wayne and he's doing he's, he's doing a song on Jay-Z's album which people will say like, yeah, and he murdered Jay-Z on it, right? Like he goes, comes back and he does the music of now um, and I think that while people appreciate it, um, it, it's not Eminem. Like, like, like they they want to pull back on that old school style Eminem. Um, and a lot of that stuff that he does um, tends to not make it onto his albums. I think he he's recently been doing a lot more of the content writing, the thematic story writing, the letters to his daughter, stuff like that. Um, but that real raw lyricist um, patterns, things like that, I think it's showing up on, on, on different types of, uh, of records that are out there. So I, from a replay value, um, I gave it a three out of five, um, not because of the whole album, but because there are a good five or six songs on there that I saw myself going back to over and over and over again um, that I was really enjoying. Um, and quite honestly, like it was, you know, uh, that 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 Migo style and that uh, some of that mumble style that's out right now. Um, I like a lot of the production because it it bumps, it bumps in a car, man. I, I enjoy it. I think it sounds dope. I don't know what the hell they're saying sometimes. Um, I wish there was some more content to it. And so this album for me kind of delivers on some of that. So like I, I've appreciated that from a replay value. So, you know, um, I, I, I'm overall on this album. I got to say probably a 2.75 out of 5, you know, overall on the whole album. I'm on 2.75 out of 5. Um, I, I, I think... Um, I think the majority of that is is driven through two things. I think the production piece that I spoke a lot about, um, I just feel like Dr. Dre and Melman and the Bass Brothers, to me, you thought, if, if he comes out with the album in three months and it's just those guys doing production, um, and I think what Ray was saying a little bit earlier, um, but if you look at, like if Mr. Porter did half and if Dre did the other half, it would be a completely different, I completely agree, totally agree. Um, I think that their production style um, and the Bass Brothers production style, it brings something different out of him. Like if you just listen to the music by itself, um, there is there's soul to it, there's instrumentation to it, um, there's things that I think connect with him emotionally, um, there's things that make him reflect on stuff. So to me, 
just their production style, I, I think is 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 absolutely um, what changes, you know, uh, the way that he writes and the themes that he talks about. Um, I think the Rick Rubin stuff, I I enjoyed a little bit of the the stroke sample and some of the stuff on the last album. Like that's kind of cool. Like you know, being a um, you know, be, being a, a a Midwest guy and, and, and liking classic rock and stuff like that, um, I can appreciate that. I like. It. I think it's kind of cool. Doing it again on this album, the cranberry sample is pretty dope, and and it and it. I think it worked well with who he is and how he writes and, and, and that whole type of thing. Um, so I appreciate that. But uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I I felt I felt like Ruben slacked a little bit on this one. Um, I, I think that there could have been a lot better if he was gonna do it. I would have liked to see him do it similar to what he did with 99 Problems where he created from scratch and he did it in that style of production. Um, I wasn't a fan of recycling um, the old Def Jam stuff. I, I, he's better than that. Um, I think it would have been cooler than that. So, yeah, o- overall, I'm at, a, I'm at a 275 out of 5 on this album. Um, but again, I, I, I will stand strong that... Um, that that technically as a writer and as a lyricist, um, it's all clearly still there, and and, and and there's no, there's nothing that he can't do, and there's nothing that if somebody wants to stir the pot, and and get into him, I, I still don't hear his name mentioned a lot out of other MCs. I'll I'll say that much, <laughs> um, because because I don't think any of them want it. Um, so and, and I think maybe that's what's necessary. Um, you know, it would be great if if somebody would 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 try to go. I would love to see. Um, I would love to see a, a Kendrick, a J Electronica. I would love to see, um, you know, uh, I would love to see Run the Jewels. I would love to see. <laughs> I would love to see. Uh, I would love to see Three Thousand come out and uh, drop a diss song, <laughs> just just to rile him up in a way, um, to to get him to really think about like having having to put pen to paper and come back and, and really do some some of that true old school um Eminem style of writing um yeah and then yeah Lance I I agree I think the the political thing um uh I, I would going against his fans with problem like album sales look at his album sales dude not a problem trust me he's Eminem um people are gonna buy his album and they're gonna buy it across the world um and that's and he's got a number one single and he broke into the t- it, like album sales is not going to be an issue and quite honestly I think the um, the political state, he's always kind of dipped and dabbled, whether it was Clinton or, you know, Bush, like he's always kind of been into that. The, the thing that's going on right now, culturally and everything, I agree a little bit with, with, with what Joe Budden said, like, it's not a, um, it, it's not the time for that. Um, it, it's, it's it, speak your peace, um, and do your thing. Uh, but I, 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 I'm fearful with the American flag on the cover. Like it's, it's kind of, it feels like it's being marketed a little bit and I'm, I'm not a fan of that personally. Just, just do dope ass music, say your stuff, have great production, be who you are. Um, let that happen. And, uh, and then we'll go from there and then, you know, and then leave it alone. Like I, you know, it's just, that's what it is for me. Um, Sarah, I, I saw, I did not see the SNL performance. I've completely missed that. I'm going to check that out after this because as I was doing research, I was like, oh, shit, I missed the SNL performance. So I got to check that out um, and, and see how that went. But uh, but yeah, so like, you know, for me, again, 275 out of 5 on this album. Um, you know, I, I'm uh, I'm hoping he doesn't hang it up. Um, I'm hoping that um, we hear some of him continuing to be on some of these other albums. And I'm really hoping for... You know, the last album to be the thing. I hope it's, you know, Last Call or I'm Checked Out. Like, whatever the hell it's going to be. Uh, whatever the album is, I hope that he doesn't. And I really, really hope um, that he goes back into that production style um, with the Bass Brothers and, and Dre and Melman and, and, and does more stuff with Mr. Porter. Um, I don't I, I don't know if somebody... I saw somebody said something about Alchemist as well and Premiere. Like, there's all the classic hip-hop dudes and, like... I know they can do a beat for him, and I know he can murder that. Like it, that's not he. He did it for how many years? Like how, the Wake Up Show and all. The, I mean, like you give him a boom bap, you give him one of those types of things. He's going to um, his old ass rhyme with AARP. <laughs> Jason, uh, yeah, he's forty five. He's he's close to getting discounts at McDonald's for coffee now. Uh, maybe that'll be the next album, right? Maybe maybe he'll spit bars about uh, getting discounts on uh, the the chairs that take you up the stairs or whatever. <laughs> It always reminds me of the beef he had with um, 
uh, the dude from uh, the source, uh, Benzino, right? Where he's like, uh, I'm pushing 30, you're kicking 40's door down. Oh, you like the Fago shirt? Yeah, shouts out to the mishmash.com. Uh, Life of Lozo supporter. They got the dopest ass uh, Fago shirts <laughs> uh, that I rock. That uh, The dope thing is like everybody reads it and they're like, what the hell is that crap? And then those handful of people that are in Florida from Michigan and Detroit are like, Fago. <laughs> uh, which, is, which is super dope. So uh, I, had, I had to rock at least some element of Detroit uh, today. And then of course, oh here, like you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate this, right? Cherry Republic. It's my Cherry Republic glass. Ann Arbor. Shout outs to the A-dubs. And, uh, and those Michigan cherries. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, so hey, y'all, I, I, I appreciate tuning in. Um, I'm going to do a lot more live shows uh, in 2018 like this. Uh, something else that I'm, that I'm doing that's new, that's cool, that's fun. I'm enjoying it. And uh, we're going to do a lot more of these types of album reviews. So I, I would love, you know, please continue with the comments. Please uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what other albums you'd like for me to talk about. Um, as we get in, I'm really enjoying it, and uh, I appreciate y'all. So tune in. We're taking a little bit of a break um, on the podcast this month. We're we're in between seasons right now, uh, but there's some really really cool content that's coming out, and I'm I'm, I'm gonna hit it hard uh, getting into February. So uh, thank y'all. Have a great night. Peace out. Two seven five out of five on revival. I'm hoping for more, but Eminem is is still uh, the truth, the realist. Um, he's he's the shit. And, oh, give me one second. Let me give a shout out real quick. Hold on. My boy Corey, Corey, Saifu, art, super dope. He actually did. Uh, yeah, let me hop back in. He does. Um, he does uh, like pencil pen drawings and and watercolor. And I've got all my top fives. Uh, he did for me. I'm gonna hang them up on the wall here. Uh, this this week. Um, but uh, super dope. He's also colorblind, uh, which is crazy. Um, but he's a super ass dope artist. So. Uh, check him out, uh, Saifu Corey Art on uh, Instagram and everywhere else. Um, and then uh, this Sunday night, um, Squiggy, if you're still on, uh, I know Sean Mike's going to be here. Sunday night here in studio, I think I'm going to try to do it live. We'll see. Um, but we're doing the top five MCs discussion that I talked about on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, I've got a hundred uh, I've got a hundred opinions on top five MCs, so we are going to do that uh, this Sunday night, the seventh. Um, I'm not sure what time yet. I'll get that information out, but we're going to talk about it. Um, I have to get all this data together, but it's going to be a knockdown, drag out conversation about top fives. Uh, so uh, I, I would love. Uh, I know a lot of you commented. We got a lot of great information. Um, it's going to be crazy, but tune in Sunday night. Uh, one way or another, whether we do it on video or we do it on audio, uh, we're going to do it live because it's just going to be crazy. So uh, thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate it. Love you all. Life of Lozo. Peace. Have a great night. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. I'm out. The Life of Lozo podcast is brought to you by Stay Tuned Studios, SDS Podcast, and Taylor Shop Inc., 03 Productions, The Beat Brigade, Rhyme Designs, Clothing, Ronald's Work Guitars, The Music Experience, Custom Trips, and more. Local Goods Market, The Art of Kyle Willis, The Josh Saman MMA Foundation, The Mishmash.com, and of course, Jack Nutrition. Thank you for tuning in to this special edition episode. Looking forward to doing more music reviews in 2018. And make sure you tune in Sunday night, January 7th, to be able to hear us talk about our top five MCs. Thanks, y'all. Have a good one. Peace.